there's a flaw with that question. You have two possibilities of the way that the universe is gonna play out. We're traveling through time. When I, when I say red, this is what I mean when I say red. This is what I mean when I say blue. This is what I mean to say three, four, five. As far as like, if I can reduce an idea to a, its equivalent word, I can say something. There are references to things that you can't define, but yet everyone thinks that language is, everyone thinks that you can have a word for everything. You can't. Yeah, so it's absolutely important to get beyond just the things that you can say and think. I've known Mark McBride since my first year of living in Los Angeles, a long time. I came here because I wanted to make movies and I didn't know a damn thing about doing it. McBride was introduced to me by a mutual friend. He had a pro video camera, Final Cut Pro version one. Like I said, it was a long time ago. And he had graduated from film school wanting to be a director. He had skills I didn't. I had a lot of ideas and a willingness to learn and make a fool of myself in front of the camera. Very quickly we were collaborating and making short films together. There, there, is, there is no better recipe for like a head going through the roof of your car than a GoPro and uh, a GoPro and a rejected, a rejected plan for a shoot. Totally, totally. We got a windstorm, we got some crazy drunk rednecks running around out here. We have two oh, yeah. cameras rolling. Oh yeah. It's a perfect time to get oh, here. Oh my God, it totally is. Holy shit. So what I was thinking about on the drive here was, um, we've known each other for two decades. I know, it's insane. And like this time, Exactly this time, um, 20 years ago, mm -hmm. was when we first started hanging out trying to talk about doing this short film together. Yeah. So it used to be when we first met, you were filming me all the time, and now I'm calling you up to film you. I know. I'm so crazy. the roles have reversed. Very much. Very much weird. so. It's fucking weird, man. When I met Mark, he was the tail end of a career as a professional yo-yo player. Back in the 90s, he was one of the most famous yo-yoers on the planet. Not many people can say that. Think about it. He had even developed a new style of yoing and written a book about it. During those first years of friendship, McBride was making frequent globetrotting trips and filming yo-yo videos for some of the biggest yo-yo brands on the planet. This seemed like a dream job to me, traveling the world and filming things. At what point? At what point did you decide that you no longer want to be the guy in front of the camera? Um, I mean, I guess I still do because I'm making these fucking YouTube videos. But my <laughs> my least favorite part is um, being in front of the camera. Like I hate it. I, I love going out and shooting things and like getting shots and taking pictures. But when I have to sit in front of the camera and talk, I'm just driving aimlessly, looking for. I don't know what I'm looking for. I think that is. But anyways, so yes, I don't like it. I don't like being in front of camera. I don't like my picture being taken, yet I have to do it for these fucking YouTube videos and it's the most cringe-worthy part. It's like the part I just hate. Oh yeah. I hate it, I hate it. Because it forces you to, um, it forces you to think of yourself from the outside <laughs> rather than like when you, when you don't have that extra human in the equation, which is your audience, then you never have to think about yourself. Okay, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's good that I do it honestly, um, because in my work I have to film people so much. That's what I do. I film people for yeah. a living. And sometimes take their picture, but mostly for a living, I'm filming people. So it's just good to like have that empathy of like I know what that's like. Oh yeah, no, it's, it's, you know, good for the goose, good for the gander. Yeah, hundred percent. So okay, I had a couple questions I was going to ask you. Yes. I'm like, um, I ask people these, but I'm like, oh, okay, McBride will give me a more McBride answer. Uh-oh. So, we have time, dude. Normally I limit these to like five minutes, but we're just fucking drive around. Yeah, we, um, we, we gotta wait out the wind, right? We gotta where to go. Um, why is art important? So, there's a flaw with that question. <laughs> it's already the most McBride answer. Decades later, and I'm the one traveling the globe and filming things. Mark has transitioned into family life and he does computer stuff for a living that I'm not really smart enough to even understand. But he's still making things, still writing screenplays, he just wrote a book, and he's about to re-release his original yo-yo book. Mark is a maker and an artist. 
because it's not like why is art and what makes art important and what makes something important art because the art what makes something art is an unexplainable value as soon as you can explain it it stops being art it starts being something else it's beauty it's terror it's emotions communication it's okay, depth so art by definition defies explanation or is it yeah. outside of explanation it's requires outside. no explanation no it re it requires it, it is outside it's something that you can't explain something that you fail to explain okay okay but it's significant thus something is first so it's so it's not that what makes art important it's what makes something important art so that the yeah so you start with something like name anything if you're like that is that's something it's important i why is it important well if it's important because it influenced a lot of people it blew up a lot of shit it's very valuable people are willing to pay money for it it's very attractive and i want to have sex with it these are all things that you can define as soon as you can't define it then it becomes art really yeah it's, it's not art until you can't really define it so bigger okay so i never came at that question from that angle and neither has anyone else so it's great that you did <laughs> it's great that you came at that question from the most mcbride -y <laughs> viewpoint no funny like but but big picture why is it important to just have art what, what what's the value of you know otherwise why do anything artistic like maybe just like you know Count well, numbers or something like what wh 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 why is why is art important you know for the soul for culture because for it gets you out of the quantified it gets you out of the quantified so communication is something that can be quantified as far as like if i can reduce an idea to a its equivalent word i can say something okay it's structured it's a concept inside of this like communication that oh, but for communication has to have a certain amount of equivalency you have to you have it has there's a confinement okay so a lot of things can be confined and represented with words with words words conceptual words not just written words but like a concept of when i say when i when i say red this is what i mean when i say red this is what i mean when i say blue this is what i mean when I say three four five twenty ben mcbride they're, defi they're definable things they're definable things but turns out the vast majority of our internal universe is not definable. It's outside of language. Language is, language and our conceptualization of it is limited. Okay? So, if you, so art is something that is significant and undefinable and it's usually undefinable because it's something that is outside of our definable, quantifiable thought, thinking, processing. And turns out that's a lot of the universe. So, yeah, so it's absolutely important to get beyond just the things that you can say and think. And just get to the things that you know and feel. The road of life takes all kinds of turns. And you could definitely make the case that had I not met McBride all those years ago, I might not be doing what I'm doing for a living now. He is an original thinker. He showed me that you could do things on your own, with your own hands, without asking for permission. This is a conversation we had a few weeks ago on a trip out to the desert. And yes, if you stick around long enough, there's some photography. Okay. The emotional versus intellectual. Yeah, but the thing, but I don't like the emotional thing because that always entails a certain amount of like, it makes me feel a certain way. I don't have to feel a certain way to just be like, that's fucking cool. Yeah. Like, that's fucking cool is the most core, basic, like pure form of art. If you look at something, anything, and you just go, that's fucking cool. You know, that is the, like I said, that's just your... That's art, man. That's the most basic, greatest level of art. Okay, okay, so we've defined all this stuff, and um, so in that context, again, simply, why is art important? If I could tell you, my answer wouldn't be art. Like, I would be quantify. I would be like explaining something, and I would be, I would take 
the, like you're saying, why is it, you know what that is? That's like saying, why are we in Asia, but we're in North America? Great. Tell me about like, but, but this is Asia. What about Asia? I'm like, I'm, we're not in fucking Asia. We're in North America. So you can't say why, you can't say what is great and important about art truly. You can talk around it. You can refer to it, but art's fucking art. And that's not a cop out. I know a lot of people who literally just like, it's, it's a cop out. Like, like, I feel like that they cop out to, because they can't really, they don't have a good answer for it. They haven't thought about it. It's like, no, I fucking thought about this. And I'm telling you, that's the line. Like, (laughs) okay, great, great. Okay, we've settled that. That's the McBride answer. (laughs) Okay, so the other question I ask everybody is, um, what does... And by the way, I think we found the coolest spot to look at. Yeah, we did. Out over. There's like a fucking army of people over yeah, there. Yeah, again. That's like I, a I little redneck. You, that's a redneck Burning Man over there. I guarantee you that's a party tonight. There's guys. That is, that is, that is guys who come out to spend the day running around in circles and then hang out with their people, drink beers over the campfire, shoot the shit. And that is, that is a good time. I bet it is a good time. Yeah. Yeah. We're having a good time. Yeah, I just, we're having a good time. I feel like we're driving around in circles here. Well, because okay, we are, so. Um, okay, so what does adventure mean to you? Adventure has a cer- okay. What there's what is adventure? What is the value of adventure? Okay, no, but what does it mean to you? What does it mean to me? Yeah, what, to me, everybody defines these things differently. Like, um, yeah. So I just want to hear how you define it. What does it mean mm. to you? That's a tough one. Because it, because adventure, hmm, because I feel like there's so many things that could be, so many definitions could be undercut. So there's definitely a certain, so there's an element of the intersection of action and unknowing. Okay. You know? Okay. And that, but then the, then the thing is how much are you intentionally saying so choose an adventure it. has to be chosen right no that's, what I'm, no, okay. that's what I'm saying no that's what I'm saying is that yeah. like if you choose it does it stop being an adventure uh, and the answer is yeah I mean like if it's not really but then you say something like a roller coaster is a roller coaster adventurous it's not going off the rails you know what's going to happen yeah, it's you, predetermined you're going to feel you, like you're going to die but you're not going to die yeah I and mean, you're standing and yeah. you're standing in the line and you're watching hundreds of people who have gone on this quote unquote adventure yeah but so at that point, it's not adventurous for the roller coaster operator, but it is adventurous to you because you've never done it before. It's unknown to you. It's unknown. To, it's it's unknown and new, and it affects you, and it's expanding because when you when you've done it as you go into it. So so it becomes adventurous for you, and as a result, yeah, things that start adventurous stop being adventurous. I mean everything slowly normalizes pretty much anybody I mean like yeah everybody's job I mean like that's the even the most amazing adventurous job stops being amazing and adventurous once you've done it a lot of times it's knowable yeah so I think that I think that the un so adventure yeah so adventure is is some kind of event action with with a level of with an un, with a level of unknowing. I didn't because yeah, I feel, like, I feel like you can do better. Okay, so what? Let me, let me, let me. I just, you know, adventure. I've had some pretty good responses to that question. 
Son and, of a uh, bitch. Now, you, yeah. now, you just, now you're just dropping the gauntlet. I know, because I knew okay. that would motivate you. Okay. <laughs> I, knew that make you I knew that would you try harder. You needed to try harder. <laughs> okay, okay. You, try, you really came at me with the play. And it's like you're kind of you're kind of softballing the adventure thing. You kind of okay. just phone that in. Okay, so. okay, okay. I won't phone that in. Okay, we'll... Okay. We're not going anywhere. We're not we'll going process anywhere. some shit. I mean, we will process some we shit. We got time. We got time. So yeah, I'm, we got we got plenty of desert, man. We got plenty <laughs> of desert. We're gonna go into this fucking dust storm over here. There's some adventure because we can't see what the fuck is beyond it. Well, see, someone, a friend of mine from childhood, told me one time. She said, you know, Ben, do you know what adventure means? I said, no, no. What does adventure mean? She said, a risky undertaking. So adventure implies risk. Yeah, that's, that's one person. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying no, that's I'm with it, you. But I'm with you. you know. but, the, but here's the thing with that is somebody who's very conscious of chaos and and I use chaos under the idea of like the the opposite of predictability. Okay, so yeah. like mathematical it's chaos versus just things. like ah oh, mayhem. It's like no, no. Chaos is means, just, it just means you don't know what. Yeah. The outcome is indetermined. Mathematically unpredictable. This could go any way. Exactly. And there's a lot of things that I would classify as unknowable and unknowing as I go into them, but definitely not adventurous. I mean, like, I got a nine to five. I don't know what's gonna happen. Like, my job is the fact that nobody knows what's gonna happen, and I'm the guy who's gotta stand there and be like, we're charging forward this way. We don't know what's gonna happen. Here's your odds that this is gonna go to shit, odds that it's gonna succeed. We're gonna do this, risk mitigation, all these things like that. that. But that's not adventure. It's unknowing, definitely unknowing, but not adventure. Yeah. I think I, you know, Okay, so I'm gonna tell you a story. And this isn't me skirting, this is me coming back around to okay, it. Okay, cool, hi. Right. I remember I was, must have been about in middle school, and my dad, who's actually been pretty hip to a lot of this stuff, but didn't exercise it, mm -hmm. you know? Um, he had a, he had gone on a trip with a friend of his named Bob, Bob Fitzgerald, and he comes back and he's telling me about this, like, well, we'll call it a hunting trip. I don't, I think it might have been a fishing trip, but it doesn't matter. They're driving back from rural Florida on the sticks kind of thing, and they're at this, and he, he says, yeah, we end up at this diner that's just terrible. It's just a terrible diner. And it, and like, it, it just, every little turn of the screw, it kind of gets dumber and worse. Like, the, the, the woman says, do you want another iced tea? And we go, yeah, sure, we'll have a refill. And they charge us for refills, like the dumbest thing. And by this point, we realize it's done. Dumb, but Bob is just in it for the experience. He's just like, yes, give me another paid for refill. Because it's so dumb. And he's just in it. And I remember my dad saying he was just in it for the experience. And I remember thinking like, oh shit, you can enjoy things just for the experience? For the novelty of it. Yeah. Yeah. And so. Like, oh, this, this is stupid a, and a waste of money, but. The experience kind of is valuable. Yeah. Yeah, the good story. Oh, yeah, we so we we had a saying on tour like bad times are good stories. Yeah. Oh, 100%. I mean, and you know, like the best stories you fucking hated it in the moment. Yeah. It's only later that you're like that was awesome. It's in true. In the moment it sucked. No, it's totally true. Yeah. It's true. that's why that's why the um the old Nietzsche phrase that which does not kill you makes you stronger. It's it should not be comforting. People yeah. tell it to you when it's comforting. If it's comforting then you're not, it's, it's, it's like, it actually is killing you a little bit. Uh -huh. You're not making, you're not getting stronger. Yeah. So yeah. It, it, for you to actually get stronger, it has to hurt. Yeah. And so if it stops it hurting, then it's actually not making you stronger. That's why you still ride your bike to work. That's true. Because it's not comfortable. No, and it's not adventurous either because I've done it so many times. defeated me on that one. What is it like? What is a good what definition it of you? adventure? What, maybe, when you think of like, oh, that was an adventure. What is it? Oh, this is going to be an adventure. When you go to Death Valley with me and my friends, you know it's going to be an adventure. It's true. You don't know what's coming. I don't know what's coming. Right? But, none of us know what's coming. But I know that I'm going to be 
positively changed at the end of it. I will, like, it will affect me. It will be like, like whether it's a good story that I lumped into, like whether it's a good story that I can lump into my grand book of life or whether it's just like, oh shit, I didn't think about that or just like, like that, that's an effect. Like I am a different human after the adventure that I am before the adventure. Yeah. So there's definitely that, but, but here's the thing, but adventure entails like an event. There's some kind of interaction with the world around you. Okay. You know, I mean like that's what's, that's, I think that's what's, like there has to be more, you have to, you have to interact with the universe. Like I think that if you, as much as people love to say books are adventurous and there's value to write, read, and there's value to reading books, absolutely. But it's reading about something is not an adventure. No, it's not an adventure. No, you gotta, you have to, like. That's your idea of an adventure? You need to get off your fucking couch. Amen. Hey, I think that the thing about adventure is you have to have, you have two possibilities of the way that the universe is going to play out, okay? The world is going, we're traveling through time and there's all the different ways that it could go and what happens is that there's the, this could go amazing but it could also go to complete shit and there's a certain amount of peril and I think that the, that, the divergence, I think that there's an arc between this could be amazing, this could go to complete shit. And I think that like, like all that, that like you, when you have that divergence of all the different possible ways that the universe, that this event, you know, whatever you're doing could go, and you've got that arc, mm -hmm. yeah, that's adventure. I like that, that's awesome. You're, you're kind of walking that kind of razor's edge of like eternal damnation or enlightenment. And, argue, and you could argue that the best the best adventures are the yeah. ones where you get when you get really far apart where you're like oh my god this could be the greatest thing ever I'm gonna win the lottery or I'm gonna fall into a fucking volcano yes. you know like yes. there you've got your you've got your Jacob's ladder really far apart yes but yet they're still close enough that there's there's you know both of them are tied together with that arc of adventure okay okay I'll accept that that's cool that's that's my that, that's my answer and I'm sticking to it um. That's a good answer. Okay, that's acceptable. We'll 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 log that one. We'll log. We'll check. log it. We'll log it. Okay. So the other thing that I uh, is on my mind. Uh, I'm struggling with how to ask this. Okay, so now you got me in my head. Okay, um, <laughs> why is why is play important? We're playing right now. We are. We're playing. When we go to Death Valley for three days, we're playing. Totally. I mean, sort of. Oh yeah, no, no. But but you know, why, why is play important? You can define play. You can do whatever you. No, want. no, no. I expect I mean, to. I think the play is important because it's real. And when I say real, like it's real on a big level in the sense that I would define, play. I'm thinking about, oh man, if I can find it, I'll send you the quote. Like one of my, Alan Watts, huge fan of Alan Watts. Um, he talked about the- I, Adventure up there. Yeah. Might be more adventure than we can handle. Yeah, we're not having that kind of adventure. Okay. Yeah. Okay, sorry to interrupt. So, Well, okay, so here's a couple things about play. Not, like, kind of non, you know, like, uh, just this almost free association yeah, yeah, of yeah. ideas. Yeah, yeah, great. You can't play on purpose. Mm -hmm. You can't put a, you know, like, if you take a kid and you say, and you put a kid down in the room and all the adults are looking at it and you say, play. Like, how awkward is that? Like, you, it, it's, it's hard. It's hard to play on command. Yeah. You know, then you, could, you can carve out time to allow play to happen. But play, Fuck. you know, like go in your room and play. Even that, like, okay, we've we've carved out time. But if I stand there and I watch you play, and you're like, we're measuring your play, yeah. and you're doing all that stuff, yeah, 
it's, it, it kind of stops being play, then you're doing something. I mean, you might be doing a game, but it doesn't stop being play. The other thing that, and again, like I, I quote Alan Watts, and I, if I can find the quote, it's great. He's, he makes a point about that you can be um, sincere without being serious. Interesting. So the idea is that, like, for instance, Isak Perlman, like, playing the, you know, the, like, the 300-year-old uh, violin and, like, you know, Beethoven and this, and, and hundreds of people have come to see him at this concert hall, and, it's, and he's doing it, and it's very sincere and real. That's, I mean, it's not porn. It's not, it's, you know... It's, for it's the on fun. jazz. It's for the, it's for the play. Yeah. It's he's genuinely playing the instrument. So I think that there's a, there's that element of play, which is which is again that and that's how it goes back to the art. Something that has no purpose is not going towards a bigger goal. So it's for its own sake. So at that point, and that's when you get into a lot of the, oh, I almost had that fly. Um, so that's when you get into a lot of the, uh, a lot of the stuff that is commonly called living in the moment. But I hate saying that because it always sounds like a fucking like poster, you know, or a poster or a uh, GoPro ad. Like I feel like Red Bull co-opted that idea from Buddha, you know. Mm. Um, but the idea of it, the value of that is aligning where you are, what you're understanding, what you're doing with your external reality. Okay. So if you are doing something with a plan, with a goal, you have created, you've created an event, something in your mind that is bigger than now because it's includes the past, present, and the future. Mm -hmm. But you can if you're only li if you only exist in the present then that extra dimension of time that's an extra dimension beyond where you are but if you're playing you're you're not worrying about where it's going and that all of a sudden brings you back into where you are Exactly, you're not confined. Play allows discovery because if you're if you're always if you're working, you're working towards something. Yeah. You're working towards a narrowly defined goal, and so it's it's more difficult to discover something else that might be better if you're just rigidly working. Because so if you can inject play in there, play is chaos. I'm playing. I now I I don't have quite the expectations. I'm just playing. Anything can happen. Well, what it is is that when you have a goal, you're measuring if something's good or bad yeah. according to that goal. If it, if it reaches the goal, it's good. If it yeah, doesn't, if it doesn't then, it's bad. It's yeah. less good. If you're playing, but if you're playing, if you're not measuring something against then, then everything all of a sudden is good or bad on its own terms. Yeah. So in that case, you have things that are good that aren't towards a specific thing, which is limiting. So when you remove your limiter, you can find, for lack of a better word, goodness wherever it may be that you didn't know that it was outside of your measured, thought, planned, you know, picture of the world going forward. You think they actually adhere to speed limit 25? No, I don't. No, I, think, I, think that's, I think that doesn't even need to be here. I think that satisfies. You Somebody think... said, hey, go put a sign out there that says 25 miles an hour. These guys are driving too fast. And I think none of them give a shit. Oh, no. Yeah, I think that is, I think, I think that is, you know what that is? That is um, some sheriff deputy guy who's like, was being yelled at and he's like, I might put the fucking sign out. Yeah. Can't yell at me, I put the sign out. Yeah. Totally.
My thing is, um, with the play, I'm frequently in a leadership position. So I have to sort of manage creative types. Yeah. Usually the camera guys, sometimes the story producer people, but usually mostly the ones that need the most management are the camera teams, the, the camera guys and girls sometimes. Yeah. And it's like, um, I have a talk I give to everybody and it's only the talk when anyone who outranks me is not around. I like an executive producer, a yeah. showrunner, whoever. I don't give this talk when they're around. No. Because they always have their big pie in the sky ideas of how things are going to look and it's going to be grand and all this and we are going to shoot it this way and do this. And I sit down with everybody and I say, okay, we're going to play. And I'm like, shoot things that make you feel. If you feel something when you're looking through the lens, odds are I'm going to feel something too. Yeah. And so, but if you're looking through the lens and you're going, is Ben going to like this? Maybe I should go here. Maybe, oh, maybe he'll like this better. Now you're in your head and you're intellectualizing this, what you're trying to do. And it's going to be shit. Again, because your intellectual is a narrower is. band. I'm, I'm trying of, to meet this and, and you don't yeah. even know what that is. And so I, I go out, even if it's just me, I don't, I do not give a shit what anybody else wants, what kind of images they want, what they want to do. And, uh. It's a little bit of hubris, but I'm just like, okay, they're going to like what I give them. Yep. And uh, there's a few people who can you can kind of talk and speak the same language and, hey, I want to kind of do this thing. Okay, we'll do that kind of thing. But still, well, that, I just do what I want until it looks good. Yeah. And I feel my way through it, and I'm, I'm happy to play and I make mistakes and do things and, and kind of find it. And I, I'm, I'm lucky I can do that in the work that I do, but I... I, I just think it's important. I think it's important to play, and that's how you that's how you learn more. That's how you do your best work, and uh, it's how you discover things. And it's ultimately the only way you can really be happy or have fun in a creative endeavor, in my opinion. True. I think that the I think that one thing. So here are the three things that popped into my head as you were saying that. One, you can do that you, Ben, and the role that you are playing because you have the trust of the guys that are paying for it. Oh, 100%. You know, I've earned like, it. I've earned you've it. earned it. Yeah, I've earned it. No, like, and, because you have yeah, that bridge between yeah. between like some, some any random human with a camera just making their art. Great. That's wonderful. I would love to do that. But that guy who just coughed up the money, he has to deliver it to somebody who's going to, you know, sell it. So there's this bridge. And well, you... Yeah, you know this. And, and the part I didn't say is like, look, we still have to deliver something that they can make yeah. into something. So you can't just do anything you want. Yeah. It still has to be with some need six, I, don't need, I don't need 60 minutes of a fucking cockroach. Well, it's, yeah, it still has to be able to be cut into something yeah. and, and made into some kind of story. Yeah. Otherwise, you're not going to get hired again. No. So, but... If you can play and still do that, that's the sweet spot. Um, no, dude, I, I will say this. I... I get pissed off when I'm on the road working and I don't get to play. And that's honestly why I started taking so much, so many pictures is yeah. because like what I do, I, I get super surprise, surprise. I get, I, you gotta put up with the bullshit when you're making a TV show. Yeah. So I, I get angry and I'll always like, I have my camera, let's take my camera, I'll go for a walk, I'll take some pictures. Now I'm like, fuck you. I can take a picture of anything I want. I can make it look as dumb as I want or as cool as I want. I can do it any way that I want. I'm in 100% control. And for me, that just becomes kind of meditative. Totally. And then if I'm angry or I'm frustrated or I'm bummed out because I want to go home or I'm, you know, I'm homesick or I'm just like, ah, oh, this sucks. I don't like the people I'm working with. Whatever kind of negativity that it happens to be on that day. And there's not always negativity, but if I can just take my camera and go walk around, and play, just take some pictures, do something for me. Now, I made something, 
just for me. Yeah. Ah, oh, that felt good. Now I can go back and I can make your dumb little TV show. Yeah. And so that that kind of gets me through, honestly. It's like my therapy. And well, because it's you, for, it's you letting walks. go of the other stuff. Like yeah. when you're when you're yeah. doing because you're concentrating on. In fact, actually, while that's very positive, that actually is why I don't like to shoot the stuff that I like to do. Yeah. Like because yeah. I, I said like I used to say you can either shoot it or you can live it. Yeah. Because when I would be shooting something, I was concentrating on the frame. I was concentrating on the image, but yet. Dude, something awesome is happening. Yeah. You know, like I'm yeah. not watching that awesome thing. I'm watching, I'm tracking. I want to be in the awesome thing. Exactly. I mean, honestly, that's why, like, when we go to Death Valley or hang out, I don't take a lot of pictures. Yeah. If you notice, like, I, way less than when I'm on my own, because I just want to hang out with everybody. Yeah. I just want to have an experience. Exactly. But then, but, the, but so that you're seeing that the, the taking of pictures, the making of images, is something that draws you in, draws your focus, and it takes your focus away from the bullshit. Yeah, it does. It forces you to let go of the bullshit yeah. because you have to put your attention there. So meditative is the exact right term because that's exactly what you're doing. You're just letting go of all that other shit yeah. because it's giving you a focus, like a totem or you know, there's all the different things that people you know do consciously, unconsciously when they create these little rituals. I mean, it's, uh, the word that I'm looking for is uh, escaping me, but it... it um, Here, just move your mouth and you can dub it in later. I'll dub it in later. Yeah, it's that. No, it's... Genius. Um, the perfect word. No, it's, 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 such a, it's, himself. Such a, it's such a good word, too, and if I could really get it, I would feel like I was much smarter than I am. It'd be great if I could think of that word. Um, Okay, so right now what needs to happen is at the bottom of the screen, we just need a thesaurus running <laughs> of words I that Ben can just put in, and then he just pick, pick one. Here, in fact, wait, here's the genius word. Scroll it by, and then I'm going to poke it. Poke? I'm just going to come back here and see if this is recording. <laughs> <laughs> You're missing yeah. comedy gold if this isn't recording. <laughs> Let's see how long it's recording. I think that's Start it over. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm just like hitting. Casey goes dead, so it doesn't. Yeah, no, I'm with you. Do like 30 minutes or something. Yeah, you don't want to, like, lose, lo like... I kind of like this. I can just sit here and yeah, sleep. Wait, hold on. Where's, where's, where's the recline on this one? <laughs> <laughs> so, Ben, what do you think about this? I think we've got at least five minutes before we run into something. This is super irresponsible. Yeah, but here's the thing. is Irresponsibility in a controlled situation is just fun. <laughs> um, well, that was my three big questions. I don't know. Those are good ones. Um, but I mean, here's the thing: is your, but your, your, all of those questions deal with things that. Um, uh, okay. I, I, people keep asking. People keep talking about those because people think that they can define them, but you can't. Like they're they're inherently undefinable things, and that's why we have words, and that's why we keep talking about them, because they're references to things that you can't define. But yet everyone thinks that language is, everyone thinks that you can have a word for everything. You can't. Yeah, I'm not even. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. By the way, I'm I'm, I'm like a, I am a hundred percent not invested or really necessarily interested in anybody's definition of those things. But I like to hear what I like to hear them like t twist in the wind a little bit about oh, it. So, totally. That's what's fun. I, I just want to hear what what comes out of their mouth. Crap! Now I gotta think about taking pictures. I haven't even done them all day. Ah! Fuck it.
14-year-old Mark McBride.